And then upon submission, I am uh, uh, taken to a, a view of the issue I just submitted here in the customer portal, which shows the uh, subject that I submitted as well as all the details that I submitted in my request and the ID of my new uh, issue that I've just submitted. Now, while looking at an existing request in the portal, a customer can comment on that. So maybe he'd want to say uh, something like that. My employee starts next Monday. Oops. So this is urgent. And I'll go ahead and add that comment so that we can see what that looks like, not only from the customer's point of view here in the portal, but also from the agent interface in a few moments. Also from the customer portal, you can add people, uh, watch watchers to your uh, issue uh, in case you have others in your organization who would be interested in this request so that they are kept in the loop of notifications as well. So I'm going to come back to my portal and I'm going to submit one other request. We're going to pretend that my employee is having an issue getting to the ADP link on their intranet to go uh, do his taxes. So he comes in here and looks for a request that's appropriate, and under Applications, he finds a Report a System problem, so we'll use that one. And we'll say that we can't access ADP. Now, you'll notice as I type, we saw out on the uh, main customer portal that I can search directly for knowledge, but as I type here, knowledge base articles that match hits on words that I have typed uh, into my customer request here in the portal come up here on the side. So that's a way for the system to provide some knowledge for users that might even prevent them from having to submit the issue to begin with, but certainly could provide some, some guidance, if nothing else. So we'll take a look at this one. Now this says, how do I access ADP? And this shows me to open the internet page and go to the ATP link and, and log in. Well, I'm not even getting the login as this customer in this pretend scenario. So I know that's not my problem. So I want to go ahead and submit this issue. And I'll say, I need to do my taxes. And since I am very late in getting those done this year, I'm going to make this the highest priority. I've also, as an administrator, defined this uh, particular request type to allow an attachment. <clears throat> so I thought I'd show you here that not only can I drag and drop files into the attachment section here, or I could browse out to my file system to choose a file, I'm also able to just do a screenshot and paste it. So if I simply hit the screenshot functionality on my browser and paste into this field, the screenshot gets pasted into the attachment field without ever having to take the intermediate step of saving it as some sort of image file. Now, since I don't need this in my request, I'll go ahead and delete that now, but um, I just wanted to show you how that works. And we'll go ahead and submit this second request. So we've seen how customers can search for knowledge directly in the customer portal and how they can submit issues through the customer portal and how they're presented knowledge base articles uh, that match their, their keywords as they do that submission. But I also want to show you the third thing that users can do, customers can do from the customer portal. Up here at the top right-hand corner, we've got a request link that'll show me all of my open requests. So if I go down and search for that report a system problem, I can get right back to that issue that I just submitted, number 449. So I've done all that we're going to do here today in my customer portal. I'm going to leave this interface now and toggle back to my browser where I'm logged in as an agent, as myself. And we're going to go find those requests and take a look at them and work through them. So the first thing I want to do is find that uh, new employee onboarding request. Now I happen to know that in my system, I've set up the system to automatically assign those types of requests to the service desk team. So sure enough, I find my employee new hire um, request here in my, uh, in my uh, service desk team's queue. So I'd like to show you first here, uh, beside the status field, we've got a view workflow link. And that's going to show me, if I click it, a pictorial representation of the workflow for this particular request type. Now you'll see in my system that I've defined this same type, for instance, service request, but those could be different, uh, different workflows altogether, should you like them to be. 
And a workflow really is just a collection of possible states that an issue can be in and the allowed transitions between those states. So, for example, from new, I can go to begin work, or I can assign, or I can cancel. And then upon those transitions, we can do some things in the system. Again, as an admin, the system can be set up to, uh, to, to uh, receive a criteria that causes a state transition. It can be set up with some validators so that we're not allowed to go to a transition if, for example, I'm not in the correct group or if the issue doesn't have the right data on it or that sort of thing. We can also do uh, post functions that are actions after the state transition takes place so that I can create new records or more subtasks or I can notify uh, individuals or th that sort of thing. So there's a lot of power and flexibility in the JIRA workflow engine here. So I'll close out the, the uh, workflow link here. I just wanted to show you that. And we'll take a look at this request. So all of the data I provided from the customer portal is available here to me now in this request. You'll notice also that I've got some SLAs set up. Now, I've got two different kinds of SLAs set up on two different issue types in my system. So I have time to acceptance and time to resolution set up for service requests and for incidents. For service requests, I've decided that that time to acceptance, which in our demo environment I'm defining as the time from creation until the time the issue goes to in progress, as a two-hour window. And I've defined my time to resolution essay as a 24-hour window uh, till the, from the creation until the time the request is resolved. If I hover over my little calendar icon here, I can see that I'm working that this, these SLAs are working on a nine to five calendar. So that 24 hours really represents three days I've allowed <clears throat> for the resolution of this service request. One thing I'd like to show you here is not only did the main request, this main issue get created, but I had workflow on the back end upon submission of this request that automatically generated several subtasks that need to be worked to complete this employee onboarding. <clears throat> we see things like generating network account, creating the personal drive and voicemail and the staff directory. In my, de in my uh, demo environment, those four things are always created for an employee onboarding. However, because we said that the employee needed a laptop, the system was smart enough to know and was configured to do so, to also create a build a PC and install software task. And I'll show you that those subtasks, while the main uh, issue was assigned to the service desk team, I've had some of these subtasks automatically assigned to other teams, such as the field tech team. So while I'm on this subtask, I just wanted to show you real quick something about logging work. If I were to begin work on this and log some work against this task, let's say I spend an hour on this, I can log that work. And when I do, that work that I've logged shows up in my time tracking section in my uh, navigation in my uh, sidebar over here, but also appears in my work log down on my work log tab. And should I add a little bit more work, let's say I spend another half hour on that as well, I have a second entry here in my work log, but all hour and a half of that time that was, that was submitted is logged here on the, on, in the total area of the subtask. I'm going to pop back up here to my main request and show you that that time has also been, uh, shows up and been logged against the main request. And we see the status of those subtasks as we go, that this has uh, had time logged against it. Now, I won't work this uh, issue all the way through because we'll see how to do that later. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on now and find our second issue that we submitted from the customer portal. And that's going to be that ADP issue, which happened to also get assigned to our service desk team. So here's our ADP issue. Now that ADP issue is an incident as opposed to the service request that we had before. And you'll see that the uh, SLAs for my incident are indeed different. In this case, I have an hour to acceptance and eight hours to resolution for an incident. Again, working on my nine to five clock. 
So as I begin to work this ticket, I'll go ahead and move this into progress. And you'll notice as I do, my SLA to acceptance has been met because I've now met the criteria that I've moved to in progress. So I can see at any given time where my SLAs are for this particular issue. Now, since the customer submitted this from the, from the uh, customer portal, I'd like to let him know I'm working on this. So I'm going to send him an, uh, a communication saying so. I've accepted this issue and will be working it with you. So I, <clears throat> when I add a comment, to an issue, I have an option of either sharing with my customer or commenting internally. In this case, I'm going to share it with the customer, which does two additional things than logging it internally. It not only posts it to the customer portal so the customer can see this uh, comment when he views this issue in the customer portal, but it also sends an email to my customer with this update. So I'll go ahead and share that with my customer. Now, I'm a little confused on what to do about this issue, so we're going to say in this scenario, I need to check with my backline. So this is a place I'm going to show you the HipChat integration with the Jira Service Desk solution. Now, HipChat is the IM chat application, the Atlassian's chat application, that can be paired with the Service Desk to really improve productivity and collaboration. So I'm going to come down to my hip chat area here and create a chat room that will be related to this issue, that will remain related to this issue, and anything that gets posted that the chat room can always be seen from this issue. So I'm going to create a room, and then we'll go take a look at that. And just in case you didn't see it, what I did was click on the link that now appears. Once I created the room, the link uh, appeared here for me to, to, to uh, select. When I do, that opens up my HipChat window to the uh, room that I've just created for this issue. And we can see that the issue's now been linked to the room and that the uh, details about that issue are here. So maybe I'd need to coordinate with my back line, and maybe I would ask Matt, uh, can you tell me how to handle this issue? And, you know, Matt would reply, and we'd have a conversation, and then I'd know what to do because I've had a chance to confirm with my back line. And that whole conversation will be stored with the issue. So I'll close out that window now, and we'll pretend that uh, I have been advised that what I need to do is create a change here because the problem is that our ADP link on our website is pointing to an old URL that ADP has changed and we need to update that URL in our intranet. Now in some environments, <clears throat> we might have turned this into a problem first and had someone do the problem investigation. And we could do that here today, but for the sake of time today, I'll go ahead and immediately create a change request from this incident, as the procedure to do that is the same for incident or for problem or change. So I'll come up here to my uh, menu, and I'll choose to create a linked issue. And when I do, I choose to create a change, and we'll say that the ADP link is not working on our internet, and the link needs to be updated. I'll be sure this gets assigned to my change management team, and I'll create that new issue. When I do, I get a pop-up here with my new issue link, and if I click on that, I'm taken to a view of my new change request now. 